Here I've got a nice viewer suggested number theory problem. And this comes from the short list to the Junior Balkan Math Olympiad. So let's see how this goes. We want to find all triples of prime numbers, we'll call them P, Q, and R, such that these three rational expressions defined in terms of those primes are all integers. So let's see what we've got. We've got P squared plus 2Q over Q plus R, Q squared plus 9R over P plus R, R squared plus 3P over P plus Q. So really we've got two big conditions happening here. First, these three are all prime numbers, and second, each of these rational expressions are integers. Okay, now I'm gonna give these expressions names just so that I can talk about them easily. I'll call this one capital A, I'll call this one capital B, and then I'll call this third one capital C. So often when you're working on problems that involve prime numbers, it'll be important to determine if it's possible for any of these prime numbers to be even. And that's of course really useful because the only even prime number is equal to two. And that's in fact how we're gonna start. So we'll start by showing that Q and R must both be odd primes, so it's impossible for them to be equal to two. Okay, so like I said, we'll first show that Q and R are both odd. And you can probably hack this together in any order, but we'll start by showing that R is odd. So maybe we'll make that our first claim. So R is odd. Odd. And we're actually going to prove this first claim by way of contradiction. So by way of contradiction, let's suppose that instead of R being odd, it's even. But there's only one even prime, so that means we're supposing that R is equal to 2. But now the condition that these expressions are integers come into use. So maybe we'll look at C. So in this setup, we have C is equal to 3P plus four over P plus Q. So we're gonna further break this down into subcases, and that's gonna depend on whether or not P is even or odd. So let's look at the first case when P is even. Well, again, that means P is equal to two because P is a prime. Plugging in P equals two inside of C, that'll give us the following new expression. So now C is equal to 10 over Q plus two. But again, our assumption is that this is an integer. That's kind of our main goal over here. But that tells us that Q plus two must be a factor of 10 or maybe a divisor of 10. But it's really easy to write down all of the divisors of 10. We have Q plus two must come from the set one, two, five, or 10. Then like subtracting two from both sides of this situation gives us that Q must come from the set negative one, zero, three, or eight. Again, we're assuming that Q is prime, so that means it can't be equal to one, it can be equal to zero, and it can be equal to eight, so that means Q is equal to three. Okay, so let's see what we have now. So now we have P is equal to two, Q is equal to three, and R is equal to two. You know, in this case that we're looking at. But now plugging these values for P, Q, and R into B, we'll see that we have a problem. So under this setup, we have B is equal to nine plus 18, all over two plus two, which is four, but notice that's 27 over four. That is not an integer. So we've reached a contradiction. Now you might say, well, what have we contradicted? Well, we go back up to the beginning of this case. We've contradicted this case being possible, which is that P is equal to two. So that means it's impossible for P to be equal to two. So that means we need to look at the next case when P is not equal to two. In other words, it's an odd prime. Okay, so we're trying to show that Q and R are both odd. By way of contradiction, we're supposing that R is even, so it's equal to two. We showed that it was impossible for R to be equal to two and P to be equal to two simultaneously. So that means that P must be odd, and that's what we're working on now. But notice if P is odd, then 3P plus four is also odd, because we have odd times odd, which is odd, plus even, which creates another odd number. So let's write that down here, 3P plus four, 
is odd. But now we're taking an odd number and divide it, dividing it by something and ending up with an integer. So that means this denominator cannot be even because if this denominator was even, we'd have an odd number over an even number, which is not an integer. So that tells us that we have P plus Q is also odd. But now if P plus Q is odd, then that means one of those has to be even. It's impossible for P and Q to be odd because if we take their sum, we get something that's even. But we assume that P is odd, so that means that Q is even. In other words, we have Q equals two. So let's just reiterate what's happening. We had this setup where r was equal to two. It's impossible for p to be equal to two. So p is odd, but that implies that q is equal to two. And now we're gonna throw that back into this expression for c and see what happens. So now c is equal to three p plus four over p plus two. But now we can do something like polynomial long division here. Notice this is the same thing as three times p plus two minus two all over p plus two. Because notice this numerator is three p plus six minus two, but that's three p plus four. Now we can pull this apart and cancel out the p plus two. That gives us three minus two over p plus two. We want that to be an integer. That tells us that p plus two must be a divisor of two or a factor of two. But that means that p plus two is in the set one, two. But that's of course impossible if p is supposed to be an odd prime. So that means we've reached a contradiction here as well. That means it's impossible for p to be odd. So let's see what we had. If r was equal to two, it was impossible for p to be even or odd, but that means that it's impossible for r to be equal to two, so that means that r is odd. So maybe we'll circle r is odd here to say that we've already done that. Now we'll do something similar to show that q is odd. So we just got done showing that r must be odd. Now we're ready to show that q is odd, and we're gonna do this in a somewhat similar way using a proof by contradiction. So let's by way of contradiction, suppose that Q is even, but that means it's equal to two, given that we're working with prime numbers here. Now we wanna look at expression B and see what expression B looks like if we set Q equal to two. Well, we'll have nine R plus four in the numerator and then we'll have p plus r in the denominator. That tells us that this numerator is odd, and that's because r is odd. We already showed that. But if the numerator is odd, that tells us that the denominator is also odd. But again, we showed that r must be odd, so we said that this is already odd, but if the entire denominator is odd, but r is already odd, that means that p is even, but again, there's only one even prime and that is two, so that tells us that p is equal to two. So now we've got p is equal to two, q is equal to two, and r is odd. Well, let's plug that data into maybe expression c. So now expression C looks like R squared plus six in the numerator, and then it looks like four in the denominator. And that's because we had P equals two, Q is equal to two. And then R is an odd prime, but that makes this entire numerator odd because we have an odd plus an even, but then this entire denominator is even, but that means that this is not an integer so we have reached a contradiction. But in this case, we didn't really have to work in cases, so that tells us it's impossible for Q to be equal to two, so in other words, Q is odd. So we can go ahead and circle this with a purple circle to show that Q is odd, and we're ready to move on to the next part of the solution. So far, we've shown that Q and R are both odd, and we've used expression B and C along the way to prove that. If you've noticed, we haven't used expression A yet. Well, we're about to use expression A, so let's do that. P squared plus two Q over 
Q plus R. So we just got done showing that Q and R were both odd, meaning that their sum is even. So that tells us that this entire numerator must also be even. Given that A, this quantity A is an integer. Well, this guy right here, 2Q is always even because it's a multiple of two. That tells us that P squared is even because P squared is what is left over. So we've got P squared is even, but that tells us that P is even. But there's only one even prime and that is two, so we know that P is equal to two. This is gonna stand for all of our solutions given the fact that we've shown that Q and R are always odd, and that's all we've used here to gain the fact that P is equal to two. So let's see what we can do from there. Let's plug this value of P back into A and see what we get. So we'll have A is equal to two times Q plus P squared, but that's gonna be four over Q plus R. Now it may not seem like there's much to do with that, but we actually have a nice inequality. And that's because that R is odd. Well, it's an odd prime. So that means that R is strictly bigger than two. Notice one is not a prime, so we can't use one as a value of r. So that tells us that this quantity is strictly less than 2q plus 4 all over q plus 2, but that simplifies down just to 2. So we have a, this quantity which is an integer, it's actually kind of obviously a positive integer, is less than 2, but there's only one positive integer less than 2, and that is the number 1. So we have a is equal to one. That's actually gonna be pretty helpful because now that tells us that this numerator is equal to this denominator. So we have two Q plus four is equal to Q plus R. Again, we use the fact that P was equal to two, but we can move this around pretty easily to see that that means that R is equal to Q plus four. Let's see what we have so far. Q and R are both odd, P had to be equal to two, and Q and R had this relationship. R was equal to Q plus four. So these are all the parts that are necessary to finish this off, and that's exactly what we'll do. So let's see where we are so far. We've shown that P had to be equal to two, and R was equal to Q plus four. And that's under this setup where P, Q, and R are all primes, and these three expressions are all integers. And now the game is just to plug this data into one of these expressions and force that expression to be an integer, and then gain the value of either R or Q, which in turn allows us to calculate the value of the other one. And I think you could probably do that, this with any three of these expressions, but we're gonna choose expression B. So let's see, under this setup, B will collapse to the following thing. So we'll have Q squared plus nine times R, but that's Q plus four over P plus R, but that's gonna be Q plus four plus two, given that P is equal to two. Okay, so that simplifies out pretty nicely to Q squared plus nine Q plus 36 over Q plus six. Now the name of the game is just to do polynomial long division, viewing that as a polynomial in the indeterminate Q, which is in fact playing the role of a prime number, which we'll use at the end. So I'll let you guys do just standard polynomial long division and see that this becomes Q plus three plus 18 over Q plus six. But in order for this to be an integer, we need Q plus six to be a factor of 18, but it's pretty easy to write down the factors of 18. So that means Q plus six comes from the set one comma two comma three comma six, and then nine and then 18. Okay, but now subtracting six from both sides, that tells us that Q comes from the set negative five, negative four, negative one, uh, zero, three, 12. But then it's also prime, so I'll just say that it has to be that set intersected with the set of all prime numbers. 
all in all, there's only one prime number from that set, and that is Q equals three. So that tells us that Q must be equal to three. And then plugging that value of Q back up into our equation up here, we see that R is equal to seven. So this is in fact the only triple that satisfies these conditions over here. We have P is two, Q is three, and R is seven. And that's a good place to stop. So it's impossible from the, there to, the, so let's see. 